Hello guys, two more teachers again. Today we're going to be covering uh, Balance Expansion, Expanded Octets, and the Vesper Theory to go along with that. Um, the octet rule was loose for Lewis structures is due to eight electrons filling the S and P sublevels of an atom's main, highest main energy level, giving it a noble gas electron configuration. However, for elements in the third row and below, we know that there are three um, sublevels, S, P, and D. And the d orbital does normally not take place in, take a part in bonding. However, it actually can, and as a result, we can get these things called expanded octets. Um, for elements in the th so, as a result, the octet rule can be exceeded for some atoms if they have more than four uh, valence level electron pairs, i.e., lone pairs and bonds in a Lewis structure. They can have more than four level. They can have four more than four bonds and lone pairs on them. Uh, valence, ele valence expansion most commonly occurs for these couple of elements because they are reasonably electronegative, have empty d orbitals, and generally don't have negative formal charges when exceeding the octet rule. Um, given that, um, given the elements most commonly involved, i.e. nonmetals, um, valence expansion is relevant in uh, molecular ions and molecules. Um, it's only the central atom that will have an extended valence electrons, not the outer atoms, just the central one. Uh, and you can use the same rules as we used to discuss loose structures before to uh, reduce the formal... Ch you can use the same rules as we did for other Lewis structures. Um, for neutral central atoms, valence expansion is limited to the number of uh, bonds and lone pairs that equals the number of atoms. You basically have set the formal charge equal to zero, so it's more or less. And then note that noble gases are considered to have uh, eight valence electrons as they are in group 18. So let's do a few examples of these uh, valence expansion, these expanded octets. If we go over to our other screen, uh, let's pick xenon, uh, uh, xenon tetrafluoride. So X, D, and then let's draw some bonds. I don't like the way that bond is, but whatever. And I'm not going to go through the whole process of drawing a Lewis structure, um, but, but because by now you really should be good at this stuff. Um, however, I do it for the sake of drawing. So, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair. Note that this, uh, you can either use two dots or a line to signify a lone pair. Most teachers prefer the dots. However, since I'm not on a fucking pencil or whatever, I don't feel like drawing dots in MS Paint. And then we can draw two dots here, since there's really no way to make this look neat. But as you can see here, that's sort of an example of an expanded octet. We can see that Xenon has eight valence electrons, but since we see there's eight valence electrons, and there is eight valence electrons normally for Xenon, which would form normally no bonds, it's an, exp it's an exception to the octet rule. However, since there's no formal charge on it, it's fine. Let's do another example, and this one I will, I suppose, do more, like, formally. Because I think it's important that we do the formal stuff. So, let's do phosphorus PCl5. So, we have 5 times 7 plus phosphorus is in group 15, so it has 5, so which would have 40 valence electrons total. So, we draw P, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. C L C L C L C L C L and we happen to have 30 left since each bond is 2 so if I put 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30 and 0. Ta-da! We have the structure for phosphorus pentachloride, and as we can see here, normally phosphorus would have three bonds if we were following the octet rule, but since we're not, it has zero formal charge, since remember we count each bond as one, one, two, three, four, five, it normally has five valence electrons, so no formal charges. Ta-da! Uh, oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Fuck you. All right, that's done. Um, so that's sort of the idea of valence expansion. Now we're going to cover on the... Now, if we go back to that last example, 
know that there was five electron domains there, which we don't know how to determine the geometry and all that stuff for it. So this is what the next couple sections, I suppose, is did, will be dedicated to uh, doing. So Vesper st theory was studied earlier for two, three, four electron domain examples. However, valence expansion allows for up to six domains. So here's the geometry and shit associated with that you're expected to know. Uh, five electron domains tends to form what we call trigonal bipyramidal. Um, so there, think of it as like a triangle with a trigonal planar molecule with like a stick shoved up it uh, to, for the other two electron domains. And then we have an octahedron, which is for six electron domains, which is every uh, bond angle is 90 degrees from each other in 3D space. And it's sort of like a cube, I suppose. So let's draw out sort of what that shape would theoretically look like on paint. Uh, I'm lazy, so we're going to do A, X, 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 X. X and here is the plane of reference which I'll denote with pi 1 and then for an octahedron we could do a x x x x x x and this here is the plane uh, with here is pi 2 here is the plane pi 1 and pi 2, just sort of to denote the 3D structure of it. So that's sort of what they look like, and there are some fancy little molecular geometry names which you are expected to know. Um, you're expected to know seesaw, T-shaped, linear, octahedron, square pyramidal, square planar, um, square planar and all that stuff. Uh, I'm not going to read this chart aloud, you can read that out loud to yourself. Um, I'll link to the notes as always in the description uh, and I think that's all there is for this topic but I need to erase this all right I think that's all that stuff erased there all right so yeah that's it for bond angles note that the bond angle is the angle between two bonds uh, the bonds in a perfectly octahedral molecule are 90 degrees, and then in a trigonal bipyramidal molecule, the equatorial bond angles are 120 degrees. So on this plane, this is the equatorial atom. They're on the equator, like, and the axial equatorial bonds are 90 degrees from each other. So the aqua, so the uh, perpendicular ones are 90 degrees. If they're on the same plane, they're 120 degrees. If they're perpendicular to the plane, it's 90 degrees. So. That's sort of that. And with that, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, see you next time.